Okay, uh, good morning and good evening, everyone. <clears throat> and welcome to the Archicad User Group webinar series for 2022. If you don't already know me, I am Matthew Phillips, the Western Cape representative for Graphisoft SA. I will be your host and moderator during these sessions. On today's agenda, I'm going to explain a bit more about these user group webinars, who should attend, when they will take place, and why a user would want to join. Next, I'll int introduce our international presenter and allow him to take you through their tools and solutions. Once he is done with his presentation, there'll be a quick Q&A session where attendees are welcome to ask the presenter any questions relevant to the topic, Thereafter, we'll finish off with some closing remarks before ending this month's webinar. Every webinar will be recorded and the recording will be made available on our website, which is www.archicad.co.za. During the Q&A session, please either type out your question and direct it to everyone in the chat or unmute yourself. Please be respectful of others and remain muted unless you are asking a question. Please also try to stay on topic during these sessions. If not, I'll quickly jump in and assist us with getting back on track. If you have any other questions or suggestions, you're welcome to send them through to me on my email address, which is Matthew, that's M-A-T-T-H-E-W, at archicad.co.za. <clears throat> We at Graphisoft SA wanted to improve the voice of the Archicad community here in South Africa and thought it would be best to restart the user group meetings to better engage with our users. After all, building community creates unity. These webinars will be focused on content which users will find relevant to improving their workflows or upskill their knowledge. The focus is on you as the users what you want to see or learn about. So in terms of who should attend, anybody who uses or has used Archicad or is interested in learning more about what Archicad can do or collaborate with. These webinars will take place once a month on the last Tuesday of every month, except of course for January and December. Uh, they'll be one hour in length and we'll do our best to adhere to these times. In terms of why you should attend, to build community here in South Africa and to grow your knowledge and potentially network. And without any further delay, let me introduce you to our presenter, Joshua Osborne. He's the product manager for the CR tools at Central Innovation in Australia. He's been working in support for both Archicad and the CR tools for 18 years and will be speaking about some of the tools that could improve the efficiency for our Archicad users. Thomas Ackerman is their local representative and he will handle the questions during the Q&A session. Over to you, Josh. Good morning, thank you. <clears throat> Yes, uh, I'm Josh Osborne. I'm the product manager for the CI Tools uh, here in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, as Matthew mentioned, I have been working with uh, CAD Image and now Central Innovation for about 18 years now, um, doing technical support for Archicad itself and for the CI Tools. Uh, and so today what I was going to go through is we will look at a couple of the CI Tools and the way that you can use them to help your productivity in Archicad. So ways that you can save time on things and do things that maybe you aren't able to do at the moment. Um, so we're going to go through a handful of the tools just to show you how those uh, work. And if you have any questions that you send through while I'm running through the presentation, Thomas will collect those and then we will answer those at the end. Um, Am I able to share my screen now? Um, 
the CI tools, you may have heard of them before. They used to be called the CAD image tools and a handful of the tools used to have other names than they do as well. So the doors and windows tool that we have now used to be called the door and window builder and that sort of thing. Um, we have quite a few customers in uh, South Africa already. So some of you may already use the tools or you may have used them in the past or use trial versions or something like that. Uh, all of the tools that I'm gonna show today are available as 30 day trial versions. Um, so if you do want to try out anything that we're going to cover here, you can head to our website, uh, which the URL for is on screen in the moment, myci.centralinnovation.com slash free trial. If you head over there, that will help you set up a account so that you can log in, grab the installers for whatever tools that you want, and then use those for 30 days. Uh, I'll briefly go over how the installer works at the end of the presentation, just so that you can see what to expect there. Ooh. So today, the uh, tools that we're going to be looking at are the doors and windows tool, the keynotes tool, the coverings tool, and the cabinets tool. So the main things that we're going to focus on are how they can save you time and how they can do things that maybe you can't already do with what's available built into Archicad. So to start with, we're going to look at doors and windows. The aim of the doors and windows tool is to allow you to draw up as complex door or windows as you need to have in your project. Um, but the idea with these is that because there is a single element for each, you can start out as simple as you need to. And then as you go through the design process, you can update the detail level that is in those doors and windows as you go. So you can start simple and then come back at various stages in the process and add as much detail as you need to your windows and doors. And we also have a built-in style system, which will allow you to create your own presets for the way your windows and doors work. And then you can build up a library of those and that lets you easily apply those in future without having to build an entire window each time. You can just apply the preset that you have built over time. So I'm just gonna switch over to Archicad and we'll have a look at the doors and windows tool. So I'm gonna focus on the windows tool to start with. And you can see in this project that I have here, hopefully the uh, screen share is coming through now, you can see that I have a variety of windows placed in this project, which are all placed using our window tool. So it's the same object in all of the cases that you can see here, um, but it is modified and customized to fit the sizes and shapes that we require at each point. So these windows here, for instance, were all modified to have a sliding door in them and to have some glazing panels on the side. These windows are similar, but without the sliding door part and so on. So you can modify the single object to create whatever you need it to as you go. So I'll just quickly go in and have a look at what we have available to do. And then I'll show you how we can build up a window to go from very little detail to a complete window like this. So. Let's just start by removing this window here. So we'll place a new one in its place with the default settings. So the idea here is that at the very beginning of the process, you can go in and just place a window with completely default settings. And essentially you don't have to choose right at the beginning what kind of window is going to be. So if you use the Archicad built-in doors and windows, uh, which probably uh, you do or you have at least uh, seen, uh, you may know that one of the first things you need to do if you want to use those is that you have to make a decision about what kind of window you want to build right at the start. So window 25 obviously is the basic version, but then if you want it to have multiple different uh, sashes or anything like that, you need to choose a different object. So uh, one of the things that our tool aims to do is to remove you having to make that decision up front. You just choose the CI tools window and that's, that's the only decision you have to make. Go through and place it wherever it needs to be. Uh, so I'll put one in my wall here. And then we can set it to the size that it needs to be and effectively leave it as it is for now as well. So we don't have to go through and make it completely what it needs to be at this point. 
we can put it in as a sort of a placeholder. So this will put in just a basic window and then you move on with other parts of your design process and come back to this when you're ready to add extra details. So let's say that we've done that, we've done some more work and we're ready to turn this into something that looks a bit more like what we're going to have in the end. Select your window and go into the settings and now we can start adding more detail. So the way that the window tool works, you'll largely be using the setting called the glazing panel layout. And the way that that works is it shows us a sort of a breakdown of what structure of the window is here. And we can go through and we can use the buttons in the interface to build it into what we need. So at the moment we have a single fixed pane, um, but using the buttons here, I can change that into two fixed panes now. And then to try and match the window that it's next to, let's uh, deselect uh, this one here and we will turn this side into an awning. So you can see on my 3D view now, I've got my little dashed lines to show that that's an awning window. And now I can split it up into a grid of five awning windows to match what we see there. And then I'll select the other pane and I'll turn that one into a door. So select the door option there and we have a door on the other side now. Now to continue to make it match up with what we have, I just need to modify what the door is that I've got there. So I'm going to set it to be a sliding from sliding on the right door and I will set the way that it looks to have a glass panel. So now I've got something that roughly looks like what I want to finish up with. So uh, when that finish is making its change, you can see now we have something that is close to matching what we have here. So we have a door that is sliding across and then we have our, um, our set of five awning windows running down the side there. So now that we've got this extra level of detail, again, we can leave the door as it is now and move on with other things. Um, and then you can come back again at a later date and go even further down the detail route as well by modifying the surfaces to match what you see in the other windows. You can also modify pretty much any other aspect of the structure of the window. Um, so you can add interior and exterior trims, you can uh, add hardware to the window if it needs them, and you can adjust the frame sizes and the way that the shape of the window works as well. So if you need to modify the top or head shape of the window, you can do that. Uh, if you want to adjust the way that the frame is dimensioned, you can do that here as well. And you can also attach sills, um, modify the glazing type and all sorts of other features as well. So essentially this will let you get as much detail or as little detail as you need to, depending on where you are in the design process or just what you need out of the tool. So that's how you can build up a window from scratch to get to where you need to. But we also have the uh, styles functionality that will let you create a library of window types that you can then just use whenever you need to place a window. So I've got a few of them placed down here. And these are all windows that I placed using the default window tool and then just applied a style using them. So it gives you sort of an idea of the kinds of windows that you can create. So using that same glazing panel um, interface that I showed before, essentially I just went through and added as many pieces to each of these windows to make them do the things that they need to, and then saved presets of each of them so that I have a catalog of windows that I can use whenever I need it. So the window and door tool by default has some built-in presets for Australian manufacturers. Um, so if you go to the configuration setting of the window tool, you'll see that in here you can choose from a library of windows here. I'm using a dowel line of windows at the moment. Um, you maybe already uh, use a manufacturer that you prefer. Maybe you already use one of the ones that is in here, um, but probably not because I think most of these are specific to Australia. Um, but essentially the idea here is that you can build up a, a style catalog based on the manufacturer that you use often. So you will build up the different variations of windows that they have and also the different variations of sizes that they have as well. So you can see here that we have a list of all of the sizes that are available. And as soon as I choose the size that I need, 
it resizes the window to fit. And then it will also update the code here so that when the window is shown in my project using a label, it will already have the code that corresponds to the category uh, that, sorry, to the code that the manufacturer uses in their brochure or whatever. Um, so this one here is using a, uh, is showing the code for the size that I just set it to and the DCLXR show what style this one in particular is. So you can use this library of styles once you have created a, a library of styles to then go through and just create these full windows by simply selecting the style as you go. So you can build your ARCHICAD template um, with these styles built into it. And then essentially you will never have to draw these windows yourself again. All you'll need to go do is go through and select the windows that you want from the library you've already created. And the, uh, the codes and labels for these are smart as well. So you can see I'm labeling all of my windows using the code at the moment. And uh, because we have preset sizes set up for these, if you go through and resize a window to a different size, after you have placed it, you will see that automatically it has snapped to the nearest size available in my presets. So you can see it's changed to 2050 by 1800 instead of 1810, and the code has updated to match that as well. So it's showing 1821 now instead of an 1818. So once you have your style codes all built up there, that will make it so that you don't have to worry about how the labeling and that sort of thing is done as well. So you can go through and again, just build up a lot of different presets there and they'll all be ready to go. And of course, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to use the styles, um, you can completely ignore those as well. The choice is yours to use them or not. So you don't have to worry about these. If the sounds of building up a library of presets sounds like a lot of work, um, and it, it is a bit of work, then you can just ignore those entirely simply by clicking the custom button here. And as soon as you do that, you are working in completely freeform mode. You can do whatever you like to your windows and you can effectively ignore that styles even exist. So you have the option to use them or not use them depending on what suits you. Now we also, uh, as part of the doors and windows tool, have uh, obviously some doors as well. Um, so you can see a few of those in my 3D model as well. Uh, let me just change to the view so you can see those. So uh, using the windows and the doors, you should be able to build all of the uh, joinery elements that you need in your project. The door tool works very similarly similarly to the window tool. Um, so there's a few more objects for this one just to cover some extra use cases. So CI tools door is the main tool that you would use for the door tool, but we also have a door exterior tool. And this is mainly to be used for uh, doors that have large amounts of glazed elements to them um, because it has the same glazing panel layout option that the window tool did. The normal door tool doesn't have that because in most cases you don't need to be able to set out a full complex set of different panels of glass and that sort of thing. Um, so that's not available in the door, but if you are building a heavily glazed window uh, door panel, you can use the door exterior tool. And then the garage door tool is a separate door object, which uh, allows you to create garage doors. We also have a built-in scheduling tool, um, which, may be of interest. We built this to show a door window schedule sort of laid out in a specific way, which was uh, the way that most of our customers wanted to be able to do a schedule. Um, so this is built into the tool. It's available from the doors and windows menu when you have that installed. And that will let you create schedules. Uh, it makes them on worksheets. And essentially it's just to allow you to schedule your doors and windows with dimensions and notes and all of the information that you might want to show. Um, the doors and windows do completely work with the ARCHICAD built-in door and window schedules though. So there's no need for you to use this if you are using our doors and windows. It's just an option that's available there if you do use our windows and doors. Uh, and if you are using ARCHICAD windows and doors as well as our windows and doors, our schedule will show there the ARCHICAD doors and windows as well. So 
Um, if this does suit the way that you like to produce schedules, you can use that on any of the windows and doors you have in your project. So that's the windows and doors tool. The next thing I want to look at, which is a little bit of a, uh, a left turn from doors and windows, is called the keynotes tool. And the keynotes tool is more of a documentation tool. Um, and the specific need that this is aiming to fill in Archicad is to bring your notes inside of Archicad. So um, I'm not sure how a lot of you currently manage notes. A lot of our customers here in New Zealand, uh, with it, if they're not using the keynotes tool, tend to do things like they will have a very large Word document or an Excel spreadsheet which has all of their commonly used notes in it. And when they come to place notes in their project, they will copy and paste out of that, which can get quite clunky and also opens up an opportunity for areas where you can, say, make changes to certain notes and not have that flow through to all the places it needs to be. Uh, and so the Keynotes tool aims to bring that database directly into Archicad so that you can access the list of notes in there without having to go out to an external uh, application or list somewhere else. It also allows you to easily create schedules of all your notes and to control the amount of information and the way that the information is presented on your labels and in your schedules. So I'll just jump back to Archicad so that we can see a bit of how that works. And the way that you interact mainly with the Keynotes tool is by using a palette. So I'll just open that up, it's called the Keynotes palette. And this is just a floating palette, which will show all of the notes that I currently have in my project. These are notes that were, that were imported from a sample database that we have, but it will allow you to import any CSV file into your ARCHICAD project. So if you already have your notes in a spreadsheet, um, or if you use, say, some, some sort of online source or external application for your notes, you can likely export those to CSV and then import them into the uh, Keynotes tool. And these notes now are essentially embedded in this Archicad project. They live in this project now. And we can use this, to, uh, this palette here to go through and select the notes that we want to place. So, I can browse through my list of notes here. I can select notes and see what the full details of the note are, and I can edit them as I go inside Archicad. And then once I choose what I want to place, I simply double click on the note. And, oops, I have something selected at the moment. and it places the note using the Archicad uh, built-in label tool, uh, which, whoa, okay. Paste it in the screenshot there, sorry about that. Um, so you can go through using this database here and select the note that you wanna place, and then just like you would with the normal label tool, just click to place it on the element that it needs to correspond to. So they can be placed obviously just by themselves like this one is, or you can place them to a specific element. And then once placed, they behave like normal labels. So uh, you can move them around, you can modify the way that the leader shows, the way that the arrowhead shows and that sort of thing. So you can go through your project now and add the notes from your list of notes to wherever they need to be. And now you have a, a, a nice, easy way of placing notes inside your Archicad project. Now that you've got some notes in your project, you can then go to your layouts uh, and you will very likely want to have a schedule uh, on the layouts. So uh, you can see if I zoom into my view here that I've got placed on the layout, you can see that my labels from the keynotes that I just added are showing here. So to create a schedule from those, just go to the CI Tools menu again and choose the option to create a schedule. Uh, and I'm going to choose to create a schedule on this layout and I'm only going to schedule the layouts that are visible on the layout. So once I click OK, what it will do is it'll find all the notes that I can see now and it'll create a schedule showing just those notes with the full detail there. So um, that is just a very nice and easy way of making sure that everything that you're using on this sheet is showing it in your schedule. You can then go back and continue working in your project. Uh, you can add more notes as you go, and you can also modify notes as you go as well. So 
for instance, um, I'm using this note here, 20905. Say at some point I decide to modify the way that that works, but now I'll just put in some extra text so that you can see what it does. Um, and you'll want to make sure that all of the instances of this note that you have placed are updated to show the change that you just made. So uh, normally the way that you would need to do that is go through and find all of the notes that uh, you placed using that note that you now modified. What you can do now using the Keynotes tool is just run an audit, um, which is a function of the Keynotes tool, and it will go through and check your project. If I press the right button, we'll check your project to make sure that there aren't any notes placed in the project that have out of date information. And if there are any, they'll show here. So you can see that I'm showing one changed element in my uh, ground floor. I can click the zoom to button and it will find that label for me and highlight it and show me. And I can now choose what I want to do with that label. So I can uh, replace it with a different note using the replace option, or I can just click repair and that will update the label to contain new information. And so now that we have that information there, I can go back to my layout again and update the schedule. on this layout and you'll see that the schedule still is in the same spot that it was before, but I now have the word test appearing and I also have that other note that I added to this view. So when you are working with your keynotes, you can, uh, as I showed earlier, you can quickly and easily place any of the notes from your database. Then before you're ready to say issue drawings or something like that, run the audit tool to make sure that everything is consistent throughout your project and then open up your schedule and update it. You can also run the update command on all schedules at once, so that when you are ready to um, say spit out a series of PDFs or something, you can just go through, click the update button, wait for it to update all of your sheets, and then you're ready to go right away. So it removes the possibility that maybe you forgot to update some part or something like that, because you just don't have to think about it yourself. Just let the tool do it for you. So that is the Keynotes tool. We also have a function in the Keynotes tool, uh, which I will very briefly show you, um, called Attribute Notes. And uh, this lets you select certain attributes in your project and associate notes with them. So you can see that I have my notes database showing on the left here. It's the same one that I'm able to place anywhere in the project. And I can choose specific attributes. So I can say, uh, let's say a specific building material, I can come through and I can say, well, everything that uses the con concrete structural uh, building material should have a certain note associated with it. So I can associate that there. And then once that is set up, any element that I place in ArchiCAD, which has, which has uh, that building material in this case, or that attribute, depending on what you do, will inherently know that it has that note. So when I select my slab here, which contains that concrete building material, you can see in my Keynotes palette here that there's this section down at the bottom here saying label contents. And we've got a grayed out label here. So it's saying that the element that I currently have selected has a built-in note in it already. It's not being shown right now, but it is there. So I can simply select that and click the little eyeball button here and that will automatically place a label to this slab with the note that is inherently associated with this attribute. So you can also go through and build out your full set of attributes in your project with the notes attached to all of them so that you don't even have to do the work of selecting notes to place and that sort of thing. You can essentially just go through and select your elements and have them labeled themselves. So that's another uh, nice and quick way of interacting with the notes in your project. All right, so that was Keynotes. The next thing I'm going to look at is the Coverings tool. Uh, this tool used to be called the Accessories tool. Um, it might be one that you are familiar with already. Um, it's one of the, well, all, all four of these tools are the most popular CI tools, but this one is um, one of the ones that's been around for the longest um, and is one of the most popular as well. And essentially what it does is it allows us to add extra detail and realism to our ARCHICAD model by putting fully 3D skins on our project. Um, these can attach to 
walls, slabs, columns, and roofs. We're just gonna look at roofs for today, um, but essentially it will allow us to get a bunch of extra detail in our model fully in 3D without having to do too much work. Um, and once you do place them, they are fully parametric, so you can modify exactly what the cladding should look like once you have it in the project. So I'm just gonna uh, go into my 3D view here. And you can see that in this particular project, I have uh, a couple of roofs here. They're using just a standard uh, corrugate looking texture on them so that they look like they have some structure to them, but they actually don't. Uh, so if I look in the section view, for instance, you can see the roof there is, is fairly plain looking. If I do want to show what cladding I have on this, I'm gonna have to draw some extra detail on or something like that. Um, and so what the coverings tool aims to do is to make it so you don't have to do that by just adding it as a 3D piece of skin over top of your elements. So I'll select my roofs in my project and I will attach coverings using the coverings tool here. So I'll attach a roof covering. And then once you get into the settings here, you can control the way that the roof covering works. So um, the main panel of interest here is the cladding type. So you can see at the moment, I'm choosing to apply some shingles to this roof. Uh, you can modify exactly what size the shingles should be and that sort of thing. And there are a variety of other types of cladding that you can apply. So there's a corrugate option, uh, ribbed cladding, shingles obviously, and then two different kinds of tiles. And there's also a flat option to just show as sort of a generic roof covering in that way as well. Um, and then once you have that selected, modify the settings to what you need, modify the surfaces to what you need, and then just click OK and it will apply that fully 3D extra skin to your model. So once that applies, you will see that uh, my roofs have a nice selection of tiles covering them now. So you can see that appearing there. Um, with the tiles in particular, you can have it show two different tones of tile. So those are sort of randomized over your roof. And if I zoom in a little bit here, you can see that I have these fully 3D tiles placed all over the roof now. Um, and if I look back in the section view now, you'll see that we have a bunch more extra detail essentially for not having had to do very much work at all. So you can see the tiles um, are spread across my whole roof now. And we've also got framing showing beneath the tiles as well. And that's an option in the uh, coverings tool. Um, you can choose how you want that framing to look or if you want the framing to be on there at all. So I've got the option to include framing turned on at the moment. You can turn that off if you don't want to see framing. And you can also modify what the framing is as well. So it's timber framing at the moment, but if you wanted to change to a different section or something like that, you can do that. Uh, and once you do, again, it will just build that, that amount of detail directly into our model now so that our section view is already accurate with those things drawn onto it. So the idea here is just to add a, a lot of extra detail to your model without having to do a lot of extra work to get it. One of the other important parts of the roof covering as well, uh, which you've probably noticed on these is the edges. Um, one of the other things that it does is that it applies the cladding to the main part of the roof, but then it will also finish the edges in a way that makes sense uh, as well. And you can modify the way that that works. So you can see on this particular piece, I have a gutter on one end and then um, a fairly nice looking uh, sort of junction at the top there and barges on each end, but I can modify the way that, that works using the tool as well. So it, it will apply something that it thinks is sensible. And in this case, uh, it has gotten it right, but you can make changes to that if it doesn't suit what you need. Um, so if I look in the edge editing panel here, I can go through and I can change any of these individual edges to do whichever things I need them to do. So you can see at the moment, we're showing a gutter at the bottom, a junction at the top, and then barges on both ends, but I can select any of these parts and change them to something else so that they behave differently. So if I change the top edge to say have an apron and click OK, okay you can see that that now has an apron there. So if that needs to interact with something else um, that is hitting the top part of this roof, it can do that. So you can go through and customize those edges to do whatever you need them to do. Um, also, there's plenty of detail to control the way that all of these different bits work. Um, so if I go back in here, aside from the cladding that we saw already, 
We also have settings for most of the way that these parts work. So for instance, if I look at the gutter settings, you can choose what shape gutter you want to use. And then once you choose the shape that you want, you can further define the shape of that and the dimensions of all of the parts as well. And in addition to that, when you're using gutters, you can also go through and uh, attach downpipes as well. So if I select this roof covering here, I can come in and I can draw a downpipe on this particular piece of roof. And if I go back into 3D, you will see that running down the side here now. So that's attached to my roof covering and then using the hotspots that you can see here, I can extend that out to as long as it needs to be and the point at which it needs to be relative to the wall and all of that sort of thing as well. So it's just, again, a, just a nice and easy way to add a whole lot of extra detail to your model that is there in 3D um, and means that it is fully detailed work and that you don't need to do anything extra for, for your detailed drawings. And of course, it would look pretty good in your renders and that sort of thing as well. I should also mention that the coverings tool uh, is controllable using your model viewer options as well, uh, which I can never remember how to get model view options. Here we go. Controllable using the model view options so that uh, if you don't want to see all of the elements of the detail at all times, you can control that per view so that you don't need to worry about, say, if you've placed a lot of tiles on your roofs and you want uh, to show it in certain views without having that extra detail, you can come in here and just say, for this particular view type uh, for the roofs, I want to not show any gutters on this project or uh, in my section views, I don't want the framing to appear or something like that. So you can, you can modify the amount of detail that it shows depending on what view you want to show it in. So that is the coverings tool. Um, and then I'm running a little short on time. So I'll just very quickly show you the cabinets tool. Um, and if you have any questions, just pop those through into the panel and um, we will see if we can answer them shortly. Uh, so the cabinets tool, um, the idea for the cabinets tool is quite similar to the idea for the doors and windows tool in that you will have a single element that you place at any point in the process. Uh, it can be as basic as you want it to be. And then you can come back at later stages and add additional detail as you go. So you can start off with something really simple and you can leave it for uh, leave it simple for as long as you like and then come back to it at any stage later on and add extra detail and build it out to however much detail you need it to. Um, you can also customize all of the pieces that you place inside it as well uh, with what we call modules and you can also modify the whole thing in freeform in 3D or you can do it uh, in detail using specific numeric values in the dialog box depending on what way works with your workflow. Um, so I'll just quickly place a cabinet so you can see how that works and make some edits to it so you can see the changes. Um, and then we'll have a look at some questions. So the cabinets tool is accessed via a different tool in the toolbox. Uh, if you use the CI tools installer, you'll see uh, you'll be able to install that by default. And essentially, uh, again, like the doors and windows, one of the ideas here is to remove you having to make a choice at the beginning. Uh, so we just have you, you'll need to decide if it's going to be in a corner or by itself. So there's two different corner types, um, but the CI cabinet is the main one that you probably use most of the time. Um, so essentially you can go through and just place that down, set it to the size that you need it to be. Uh, let's just make it a little bit wider. And then from there, you can essentially leave it alone for now as a placeholder and then come back to it later. So uh, looking at this, in 3D, you'll see that it looks pretty much how you might expect a cabinet to look. And then when you get to the point of adding more detail, you can do that. So with this particular cabinet, I'll select it and go into the modules view, and you can see what sort of control you have over this now. So you can see it displays a sort of a schematic view of the blocks that I have there. And I can go through and I can modify what is in each part now. So if I select the middle piece here, I can modify that to be a draw stack. Um, I can select the one on the right and set that to be uh, a, a right-hand door, say, in this case, but I've got a left on the other side. 
So you can go through and build uh, the cabinet that you specifically need uh, using that. That will give us a bit more detail to our model. So we have a cabinet that fits the shape and size that we need and also contains the components that we need. And then as you go further on, you can add further detail as well. So you can modify the way that the fronts of the cabinet looks. So I can modify this one and change uh, the front to have a glass panel instead of a flat panel. I can control the way that the handles show as well. So I can come in here and I can say that this one should have a D-pole on it. And I can also go through and fill it with elements as well so that it will look like a sort of a lived in cabinet. So I can go through here and say that I want to fill this one with a stack of plates as well so that it shows some extra information. Hit OK. Now we'll have that extra information just available there in our model. So you can see I've got a glass front on this door here and there's a stack of plates showing at the bottom there. And then we can go through and we could subdivide that into shelves so that you can um, see the amount of shelves that you want to have here, put different things on the shelves, put different fronts on the shelves. You can build it to as much detail as you need by going through and making those changes to the modules and spaces. And you can also adjust the uh, specific details of the structure of the cabinet itself as well. So obviously this is the overall size and shape here. And then you can also change the dimensions of the face of it, the carcass and the plinth and legs if you have those as well. So again, the idea here is just that you can add as much detail as you need or as little detail as you need using the tool. So that is the CI cabinets tool. Um, so those are the four tools that I wanted to show today. Um, as I mentioned before, you can get a free trial using the URL that you can see on screen now, myci.centralinnovation.com slash free trial. Just head over there. Uh, it'll help you set up the process of creating an account and you'll get uh, access to download the CI tools installer. Uh, so once you get that installed, this is what it looks like. You'll enter the login details that you created as part of the trial process. And when that happens, uh, once you've logged in, it will present you a list of tools that are available. So just click over to the trial tab. Make sure you choose the version of Archicad that you want to use, and then just go through and find the tools that you want to try and hit the install button here. And that will let you install any of the tools that you want. And then you can use them inside Archicad to do whatever you want to try out um, for 30 days. The trial period is limited in time, but it's not limited in functionality. So the tools will behave exactly as the full versions will. They will just run out uh, after 30 days time. And if you decide that you don't want to go ahead and use the tools, anything that you've placed using the, the CI tools will continue to display completely fine without you having a license. So if your trial expires, but you have a bunch of cabinetry that you placed, the cabinetry will still be there after the trial expires. Uh, it'll still print, it'll still show in all your 3D views and everything like that. You just won't be able to edit it or add new cabinets anymore. So you don't need to worry about uh, creating extra things that will suddenly disappear at the end of a trial or something like that. Uh, if you do choose to um, want to actually get hold of some of the tools after you've run the trial though, you can purchase them, uh, which is again via MyCI. We have three different uh, subscription options for the CI tools. I'm showing them here at the moment in USD pricing. Um, so the three options are the basic pack. The basic pack will let you choose any two of the tools of the, the ones that we have available and uh, get just those two. That, was, that one's 31 USD um, per month. The professional pack gives you our seven most popular tools. Uh, so all, all four of the tools that I showed today are part of the professional pack. Um, but the full pack is the cabinets, coverings, doors and windows and keynotes, which we've looked at today, as well as the electrical objective and stairs tools, um, which we have some other webinars available for if you want to look into those, or um, we have uh, regular webinars that we run for the CI tools as well. So you could look at those um, or just ask us about them via email or something like that if you want to. And then there's the premium pack, which just gives you every single CI tool that there is as well as a bunch of extra tips and tricks and a library of objects that would create just for um, premium subscribers as well. So those are the three subscription options. Um, I think Thomas gave me some rough local pricing, but I can't find it anywhere at the moment. We can cover that when we get to the questions in a second. 
I've got that on hand, Josh. Uh, I yes. just um, wanted to mention to to everyone that um, you can actually choose in which current currency you pay for them. And if you uh, currently pay in New Zealand dollars, the basic is 342 rand 85, and that's at the current rand uh, exchange rate. The premium is 878 rand, and the full one is 1,270 rand a month. Cool. Thank you. So thanks everyone for your time. Um, as I said, that's the place that you go to. I think I've showed that same URL on a slide uh, three times so far, so you're probably tired of it now. Um, but thanks very much for attending. And if you have any questions, we'll have a look at those now. So I will just briefly stop my screen share so that we can have a look at what we've got there. So uh, I've uh, collated a few questions that came up during the presentation. Um, one of the, um, yeah, we, let's start at the top. Uh, can the CI doors and windows be converted to ARCHICAD elements at any stage? Uh, it depends what you mean okay. by ARCHICAD elements. They can't be converted. So, words, yeah. so doors and windows in, inside the CI tool suite remain CI tools, doors and windows. They cannot be converted to ARCHICAD objects uh, that operate in the ARCHICAD library, in other words. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Windows and doors, uh, do they operate the same way that ARCHICAD objects would in BIMX and on scheduling? Would you be able, for instance, to schedule them with the ARCHICAD scheduler? Yeah, they, they work exactly as, um, as normal windows and doors will for your schedule. So if I open up one of my uh, window, window schedules here, my CI doors and windows will show in the same way that you would expect any window or door to show. I think uh, I might have a few here, but yeah. So they'll, these are all the CI tools, doors and windows. So they show their floor plan view and their front view in the same way you'd expect them to. Um, and the dimensions and everything should come through fine. So you shouldn't have any trouble with those schedules if you're using our door and windows or the built-in doors and windows. Uh, the next question related to, can you schedule the elements inside the roof coverings tool? So in other words, the, the 3D objects that get populated as part of the um, coverings tool, typically in wall, slab, uh, and, and roof, would you be able to actually put those on a schedule as well and um, get information out of them? No, uh, or at least not. You can schedule parts of the uh, of the coverings. So we have parameters available in the coverings to schedule things like the total area um, of certain covering types and that sort of thing. So you can say, I want to show the full area of all of my roof coverings or something like that. You can schedule that sort of thing, um, but we don't. Uh, you can't break them down much further than that. So it's, it depends specifically what you are wanting to schedule. Um, and related to that question is, can you build information into the, um, to what level can you build information into your um, objects that are created by the, the coverings tool? Uh, I don't know if my question makes sense. So in other words, um, within that object, you would be able to, to put certain amount of information and parameters into it. Um, yes. uh, are you talking about uh, like and metadata or properties or something? Yes, yes, in terms of properties and metadata. So that they, uh, one, once the coverings are placed, they behave just like ARCHICAD objects. So you can put in whatever properties you could put into an object normally. And obviously you can use your ARCHICAD properties and classifications to add extra things uh, to those. but there aren't any properties uh, inherently associated with the coverings in that way, no. Um, the last question relates to, uh, can you uh, use the coverings that have been applied in solid element operations with other ARCHICAD objects? Yes. I think uh, the coverings, yes. coverings just behave like any 3D element in ARCHICAD, so those should work fine with solid animal operations. Yeah, that, that you should be able to apply SEOs to them, or you should uh, be able to use them to apply SEOs to other elements. Yeah. 
what one of the things that I just would like to mention is um, when we spoke about keynotes, um, we are currently looking at actually bringing properties into keynotes as well. So Archicad properties potentially in the future will actually be able to become part of your keynote um, operation inside um, the keynotes tool, but that's uh, that's coming down the pike. It's it's not available yet. Um, yeah. Is there, are there any other, is the, one last question about the morph. Sorry, I missed one. Uh, yeah, can you explode the uh, coverings to morph? I believe that the answer is yes. Uh, I've never tried, but I'm, I believe you can convert anything into a morph, so I don't see why not. So let's try that. That's fine. It looks like it's gonna have a lot of, a lot of detail in it because obviously, this one in particular yes. is a lot of individual tiles, so it's going to be a pretty comp. Yep. <laughs> I think that might kill my computer. Hopefully, that's. There we uh, go. Uh, so, yeah, it, it will convert into a morph. Uh, how you would meaningfully deal with that after you have converted to a, a morph might be a little bit tricky, but um, it will let you convert it to one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, also, I just wanted to mention as well, with the CI tools, when we uh, add new features to the tools um, or enhance existing features on the tools, we do that based on feedback from customers. So if you do, say, pick up a trial of the tools uh, and find that there is something that you can't quite do, some use case that you have that it doesn't quite cover or something like that, please feel free to contact us about it and just let us know because the way that we decide what we're going to build next in the tools is based on what people are asking for. So the functionality to uh, make properties work with the Keynotes tool that Thomas mentioned just before is something that we are looking at because a lot of customers have been asking about the possibility of doing that. So if you do spot areas that could do with extra um, things added to them, maybe there's roof cladding types that you use very commonly there, but we don't hear, so we haven't really thought to add them. You could uh, ask us to add those sorts of things. We, we build them based on your requests. So even if you are not a customer, you're just using a trial or you're just interested, please feel free to send through any sort of requests like that to our support desk, which you can access via MyCI. So once you create a trial, you'll have a MyCI login and you can create support tickets in there just buy our support to get through saying, hey, why can't I do X using the tool? And uh, we'll look at it and see, um, see if we can add that in a future update or something. All right, was that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's it, but there has been a comment on the chat by Francois that he says that we should demo the electrical tool sometime. But uh, yes, we'll save that one for another day. Yes. Yes, the electrical tool, just very briefly, it, it is a it's a nice quick and easy uh, tool to make it so that the hassle of creating electrical symbols and plates and things isn't so much of a hassle, basically. But yeah, we can demo that at maybe if we do another one of these at some point. Awesome. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Thomas. Um, so everything on my side, I think the only thing left that I need to do is say thanks to everybody for attending this evening. Uh, thanks, Josh, for getting up so early to deliver this presentation. I know it's uh, early hours of the morning for you. I'm sure many of the users have gained a lot of insights to this session. And again, if you are interested in making contact with them, um, you can go to that email, uh, sorry, that the website link that he shared. Otherwise, you can just send me an email and I will forward that on for him. Uh, that's everything on my side. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care and goodbye. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks for the opportunity. Cool. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers, everyone.